professionals and salaried segment what do you think uh, are the big challenges that people are facing what are the expectations that this segment has and how much do you think madam finance minister would be able to address in this budget okay so thanks arab uh, so uh, you know salaried taxpayer and individual taxpayer they're always you know worried about the high taxes less and less exemptions so every budget the taxpayer is looking for you know some relief in the form of exemptions reductions lowering of tax rate so in terms of the expectations one of the biggest expectation is the basic exemption limit under the new tax regime it is currently at 3 lakh rupees so the expectation is that this exemption limit from 3 lakh will be increased to 5 lakh now the result would be that this will lead to reduction of taxes for the salaried individual middle income uh, taxpayer and this will lead to a uh, higher disposable income in his hands so that's one then uh, the other deduction which is available to all salaried taxpayers is standard deduction now that standard deduction is 50000 currently uh and so the purpose of standard deduction is basically for the salary taxpayer to meet any kind of expenses to earn the salary income so like for business uh, uh, you know people who have business uh, income or professional income they typically are able to set off a lot of expenses so sa- standard deduction is again expected uh, to increase from 50000 to at least 1 lakh rupees so uh, almost uh, double in the uh, exemption limit then if i were to look at other uh, challenge areas uh, uh, hra exemption let me talk about the hra exemption so that's again one of the uh, exemption which is used uh, very widely by salary taxpayers uh, people who actually live in rented accommodation now there are various slabs for these exemptions and least of the three slabs is uh, exempt in the hands of the taxpayer now one of the slabs is uh, 50% or 40% of salary now for 50% of salary that slab is only applicable to uh, rented accommodation being in one of the metro cities and those metro cities are only delhi uh, bangalore chennai and kolkata now we are seeing a lot of these tier 2 cities come up specifically you know if you look at gurgaon pune hyderabad ahmedabad uh, noida so uh, one of the you know expectation also is that if these tier 2 cities where there is there are is a you know lot of people salaried individuals who are staying if these cities can also be uh, considered for that 50% uh, you know limit so it's 50% of salary is the limit so that's another uh, expectation uh, from a salary tax pair then uh, the other area is on the interest on housing loan interest on housing loan uh, is allowed as a deduction the limit current limit is 2 lakh rupees um, uh, a lot of people take housing loan and they stay in cell you know uh, in those houses so typically for a self occupied house uh, uh, the maximum amount of deduction is 2 lakhs so again the expectation is if this limit can be increased from 2 lakh to at least 3 lakhs so 50% jump in the limit so that's one on the uh, housing loan uh, second is that Uh, if there is a housing loss so under the head uh, house property if there is a loss that loss can be set off against other heads of income now there again the maximum amount of housing loss which can be set off against the other head of income in a given financial year is only restricted to 2 lakhs so that limit also if it can be increased from 2 lakh to 3 lakh would be a, a big uh, you know uh, benefit for the taxpayer shalini can uh, the uh, salaried segment uh, expect some changes in the capital gains taxes because that is one place where they face lot of challenges because it is critical for them to uh, take view of these uh, investments that they make so sort of in fact uh, capital gain uh, you know uh, they the ask from the taxpayers investor community is to simplify the whole tax uh, capital gain tax regime so if you see the way the current uh, capital gain tax regime is that uh, different assets uh, you know to be able to classify as long term or short term capital asset there is a different holding period which is defined and it is very confusing i'll give you an example if it is a say a listed uh, uh, stock stock listed on a uh, in a stock exchange in india then the period of holding uh, for that uh, stock to qualify as long term capital asset is more than one year whereas if it is an uncoated stock unlisted share then the period of holding is 2 years 
and similarly the tax rates are uh, different so uh, for some long term capital gain the tax is 10% for some it is 20% for similarly for short term capital gain in some cases the tax rate is 15% in some cases the tax rate is either slab rate or 30% so i think uh, one of the uh, asks from the investor community from the individual taxpayers in general is that if this whole capital gain tax regime can be simplified with uh, you know a simplified uh, or the uh, similar holding periods for the asset to qualify as long term short term and also similar rates uh, for uh, you know uh, short term and long term capital gain and amongst the different class of assets that's one second is uh, listed security there is an exemption of uh, uh, long for the long term capital gain to be exempt there is a ceiling of 1 lakh now this 1 lakh has been there for a for a very long time so the expectation is that amongst other changes which are expected to simplify the whole capital gain tax regime if this 1 lakh limit can be enhanced to at least 2 lakhs